Good morning chaps, welcome along to the Monday's vlog and today we are getting prepped up for filling the casks so we can empty the tanks and brew at some point this week. So I don't have the correct tool for taking the shives out of the casks and I've just been using a chisel or a screwdriver for the past year or so, it's worked fine. Um, but I used to have a de-shiving tool and this little hammer starly thing that you could use. They're about 45 quid from Charles Farrams or Murphy's or something like that. I've decided today I'm actually going to make one because I have like five brick hammers and I only really ever use one or two of them. So what I'm going to do is, because this one's welded onto a piece of metal tube, makes it quite solid. So what we're going to do is take this brick uh, chipper down to a point, you know, like a pencil point, sharpen it, and then you can send that into uh, your said cask or shive and ream her out with the, uh, with the back of the hammer. Should work because there's a very similar design here to uh, how, they, how the original one looked. Uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of it and I'll pop it in here so you can see what I'm aiming for but I think I can make one with this because it sounds like Jack's struggling to get these shives out. The keystones, not so bad. They do come out quite easily with a screwdriver. And then maybe at some point in the future we'll also make a de-shiving fork which I bought and it is basically a two-pronged fork that goes under the edge of the shives but I never really used it when I had one before at IVB so is it worth manufacturing one? Probably not. This is the way forward. So here's my take on a de-shiving tool. Okay, so essentially what I'm wanting to do is bring this down to a point in the center there and then basically run that off up to the edge. Uh, as thinly as possible. So there's one edge. Let's see if I can do the same that side. That's kind of not far off what I'm aiming for, to be fair. So let's get the grinder out and see if we can't start to shape this bad boy a little bit. Well that's a lot easier than I anticipated it being. So I've just basically chunked off two sides to make a point. Uh, it's more like a pick now. And what I'm going to do is go back in with a grinding disc and we're going to round the edges off. We're going to smooth everything out a little bit and uh, maybe just bring these two sections level because I'm slightly off with them. So a bit more work with the grinder and that will be ready to go into service. Well that's about it folks. So we've taken that brick hammer and we've turned it into this pointed nosed shive removing tool. So it fits nicely into the center of the shive but it doesn't go that far in that when you start to pull on it the edge of it is going to sort of catch the corner at the edge of the steel. If you catch the edge of the steel with this section here then you're going to scratch the shive hole and eventually the cask will begin to leak. So let's take it down to the bottom put this bad boy in action. I might wrap some tape or something around the handle uh, for the winter time because it might get a bit cold holding this all the time or you could just wear gloves. So let's go see if she works. So let's grab a cask Side. and make sure we're in shot so we'll save that 
and let's see how handy this is. So in. Well, it wants to slip out a little bit. Ah, yes. Ah, there we are. It kind of works. It does want to slip out though, so I might just put some little ridges on here. So it's got something to grip onto, but uh, I think that'll make life a lot easier, bud. Yeah, yeah so just going to pop a few little ridges across there, and I think we're good to go. Well, it's just about dinner time. Um, Jack's washed 20 plus casks, so we'll start filling them in a minute. Uh, but I'm going to have to go up to Screwfix to pick up some jump leads, so yeah, the battery. Oh, it's locked. The battery on the new car uh, shut the bed last night. So I've got another battery that I saved from the old Alpha, I've, but that's only got three volts in it, so I'm going to put that on charge. So for the sake of 10 quid, I'm going to go up to Screwfix and get a set of jump leads. And then if this new battery that I change across to doesn't cut the mustard, then at least I can jump start the car with uh, with the Peugeot with this bad boy so we'll just chuck you in here and then we'll uh, have, a, have a scurry up so uh, we've started the cask filling and uh, I've modified the filling hose to make it a little bit thicker in order for us to get more beer through and I did order this hose off eBay. It was sold as silicon hose. It just doesn't feel like silicon hose to me and it came all kinked in the package. Look at that and normally silicon hose wouldn't kink like that. So I'm not sure what eBay seller it was off. But beware, oh, it probably is silicon, it's pulling like silicon. But yeah, I don't like it, so I've decided not to use this hose. So, it's a waste of money. I'm pretty sure it cost upwards of 30, 40 quid as well, that. So, I'll see if I can dig out the link for the eBay seller that ripped me off with that. But uh, I'll not be using them again. And then also we've got uh, this, like I said, this extra battery, which is out of the Alpha, 72 amp hour, uh, 680 amp cranking. So we'll see if this will get the other car working. Uh, this was a pretty newish battery when I bought it, of course. Um, but yeah, I think she's only got sort of 20,000 miles on her. Um, so I reckon we'll substitute this one out for the one that we've got in the old Hyundai. We're still here chaps and we're still casking. You see Jackie Boy in the background there getting the last of the vacant gesture out of the tanks. There's Dominic because uh, the family arms are out to pick me up. So I need to go back and of course change the battery in this Hyundai. I'm um, not sure if the old battery from the Alpha is going to work though because it's only holding like 12.4 uh, volts and when I took the charger off it started dropping so yeah I'm not sure anyway got a parcel today from Phil at Tortec um, Tortec info on Instagram really really good artistry is that the right word for it I think so <laughs> he's a very good drawer way better than I am and he's the guy who did the robot um, fermenters for us that we're still to put up in the pub, but we will. So, Harry, here's some roots for you. I've had them in the ground for two years and had good harvest from them. Originally bought from Willingham Nurseries online. I hope they give you tons of hops. So, here they are, folks. So, you might recall. I was uncertain as to how to move forward with that great big wall that we've got at the back of the pub. Well, I'm going to pop these little beauties in there. 
We still need to wait a couple of days before we can get the bed ready though. So what I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of water into this bag and uh, hopefully, because they are hardy young fellows, that will keep these fresh for the next day or two before I get chance to plant them. But these folks are Cascade, so really looking forward to getting them in the ground. I'm not promising that I'm going to be using them in any beers. If I have time, I probably will. But more than anything, I just want to get these in the ground and cover that cover that wall up. Oh, it's Mr. French. So I want to say a big thanks to Phil for sending across these hops. I owe you one, buddy. You know I really do for all the artwork and everything that you've done for us. Spot on. But also, I want to extend my thanks to Froggy as well who left me a little bit of a surprise on the weekend but I wasn't in to pick it up so from these chaps here I don't know how much of this he wants me to put on the channel but uh, well I can't help but share with you what we've got check this out hey heat shield ah I love that bud thank you very much a fantastic pair of Parawell Panthers. Now these, size 10, are pretty good gloves. And then we've got some Predator signature gloves for MIG work and what else you have. And then also some padded. Gemma might make these for uh, oven mitts if I'm not careful. But yeah, these are nice thick padded leathers for doing all the welding work and stuff like that on the new tanks and whatever else we do over the next few weeks so huge thanks to Froggy, huge thanks to Phil you all spoil me rotten don't you so couple of extra tanks here because we might just squeeze 13 casks out of this last fermenter of vacant gesture if the last tank is anything to go by. Uh, so we've just got those rinsed and washed up there. And then I'll just take you up here and show you what we've got left in the tanks. So FV1 had the bitter in. Just slide the lid back. We had a bit of light in. And you'll be able to see that's what we've got left. So. There's around 10, 15 litres in there, but lots of it, as you can see, is hop and trub matter. And then this one was one of the tanks of vacant. And again, we really did pull pretty much everything out of this one because that is just hot particles. We seem to be steaming up a little bit in there, which is weird. But yes, there we go. So that's what's left in the bottom of there. And then finally, the one that we're just about to finish emptying, there is actually quite a bit of beer left in that. So we just need to get those extra casks ready. We'll just get those extra casks ready. Get this last bit of beer out. And then we're gonna head up, head back to the ranch. Friggin' rides. That's it, we're finished in here. So now we're gonna shoot back home. Quickly change the battery on the car, which reminds me, I'll take some vinyl gloves so I don't get dirty hands. And uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see if it works. So here is the offending article. So we'll just set the camera up. First we'll just test the voltage on it, just to make sure that it is flat. 8 volts, definitely flat. Right, what do we need? I think a 10. Yes, it's a 10. 
And I also brought gloves, but for some reason I've decided not to put them on. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that out. And not to match up. That should be all right. Right, there's not really much point in uh, bolting the battery in if it doesn't start, is there? So, let's see how this goes. Nothing! Maybe we need more voltage, but... Well, that failed. I did only get that battery up to 11 something volts though, so I'm not sure whether that was down to the battery or there's another fault somewhere else. So, a bit of investigating to happen first and then we'll come back and see how we get on. <laughs> so I brought the other battery in here. We've got that bad boy charging up just on this cheap equip. 4 amp battery charger so whether that actually does the job for us or not I don't know it put some charge in the other battery but the other battery was down to 3 volts and that's pretty damn low for a 12 volt lead acid um, and then also while we're waiting instead of having a normal healthy tea like anybody else would well we're doing some experiments on frozen chips for the pub so this is what we've got We've got Chef's Larder Chunky Chips. We've got Chef's Larder Premium Extra Chunky Chips. And then we've got Julienne. So we're just gonna cook them bad boys up and we're gonna give them a once over and we're gonna see which are the best and which are the worst. And then knowing me, we'll probably end up doing home cut chips anyway. <laughs> but it's worth a try because if, if these turn out to be really good, we'll use them. If not, we'll we we'll them and uh, do them from scratch. So we've had quite a selection of the chippy chips. These premier, premium should I say, were without a doubt the best chip out of the lot. The worst ones were the julienne fries, believe it or not. But I'm still not convinced that any of these are suitable for us to put into the pub. So, um, yeah, it's one of those questions that still hasn't been answered yet by today's few experiments. But before I sign out, which I'm about to do, I just want to show you a few ideas that we've been coming up for the menu. None of this is set in stone, but it's something that uh, I'd like to share with you and it will help me end the vlog. So if I take you right up to the top, you'll see that uh, we're definitely thinking about doing a breakfast menu with sausage butties, egg butties, combos, and uh, breakfast, a Draymond's breakfast, which would be like your small breakfast, and then a brewer's breakfast and a veggie. Then we've got all different types of chips and snacks. And then we've got some sandwiches. There's possibly quite an extensive list of sandwiches to go on. Then we've got burgers that we'd like to do. And then extras and sides and then a bit of equipment that we're going to need. So this is kind of the direction that we're going in. Uh, so what I'd like to do then is just ask any of you guys out there who are from a catering background. I know Dave the Welsh Brewer has been in the industry for a number of years. Uh, so if anyone wants to point me in the direction of some 
uh, extra reading that I can do or any resources on the internet that can help me in terms of uh, kitchen equipment now we've got fryers we've got a griddle I'm not sure what I'm looking for in terms of a blast oven or an oven or convection oven whatever you call it and I'm not sure what we're looking at for tea and coffee machine either so that's a big one if anybody knows anything about tea and coffee machines uh, where we get ripped off with the expensive ones or whether the cheap ones aren't worth going for I need some advice so I'd really appreciate it if you could leave some comments down below or if you jump onto Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and drop me a message there um, I'd much much appreciate it uh, but other than that folks uh, I'm slightly sidelined and distracted with this so I'm gonna end the vlog here We'll pick it up tomorrow and uh, well we're going to start brewing actually so we'll get a bit of brewing footage for you tomorrow. We'll see you for that.